My uh, calves might be too big, actually. They're too white. What? That's one thing they are. Ah, oh, that's racist. So, Mike's legs make his shoes look brown. Do they? Put it in the comments. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, we're Dan and Mike, and we're here to help you with your online fitness business in any way that we can. Um, and if, look, if you like any of these videos, if you liked one before, you like this one, please tell us, because it feels like no one's watching half the time. So, be nice. Get in our members group. Get in a group. That's the that's where it's all happening. Yeah. Where you can get all the information you need to grow an outstanding online fitness business for just ninety nine pound a month. It's with, fucking uh, ninety nine quid with, with no, no contract. contract. So like if you're not willing to spend that on your business, what are you even doing here? Well, yeah, I think that's that's the thing I always come back to with it is you do have to invest in your business. You know, you know a lot of the, a lot of the mentors say, oh, you got to invest in your business and it's like, yeah, it's 10 grand for three months. It's like, well, that's, not a, bit, that much. that's a bit much to be told to DM people. Um, but 99 quid a month is is not really, is it? Um, so yeah, do it. Yeah. Get in. Get in. Yeah. Mental that we've never actually invested uh, 10 grand in three months in a uh, mentor, isn't it? Never. We've never, we've never done that. Uh, so you don't need it. You, know, you don't need it. What's this one about then? Uh, something about being credible or something? Why you should listen to Shit. us, basically, yeah. Why you should even bother listening to us. What have we done? Who are we? Who the, why the hell are you Ooh, even here? Who are you? Who are you? What do you Too do? Too many questions. Um, a brilliant really, podcast. A brilliant podcast, yeah. Oh, chill out. Um, GBH the Eros. Why should they listen to us, mate? What's, 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 why are we talking about this? You don't why have to. If you don't want, you can if you want. Yeah. Um, so... I'd like to think you just listen to us because we're just nice guys who speak sense. And, this you know. it, it, it is a thing, like, um, it is a thing, like. <sighs> it's a thing. It is it's a, a thing. That's it. it so end of. <laughs> Share it uh, if you found value in that. Like, it's a whole broke accountant thing, isn't it? It's would you trust a broke accountant to do your accounts? Probably not. And the whole argument of would you trust a fat PT? You know, probably not. Um, I think there's a reluctance sometimes from us. We've actually, I know I've been asked the question, and I think you probably have as well, why don't we share more of the figures that we make or, you know, like successes? And I think neither of them come, come naturally to us because I think... Again, even with our humour, we're, we're self-deprecating. Even when I'm playing the character of having a big ego, it's done from a, almost like a self-deprecating standpoint and it's it's over-inflated. Um, and personally, I don't know where it stems from, from you, actually. I'll get a bit deep here. So, like, I've worked through some of this with my therapist and I've not told you this yet. So, like, I think that some of this... So I've got you know this part about me where I don't feel I don't feel good enough with pretty much anything that I do whether it's work or or life or relationships or whatever and I think that stems from some things from from my childhood with certain elements being told that I weren't good enough at certain things um, even though I felt that it was um, but there's there's been two separate instances from my childhood that I remember doing well at something and being told not to celebrate it. So the first one was I got perfect scores on my... You, know, you remember SATS results? Mm. Perfect scores on SATS results. And I was obviously really excited and I was really happy. And my mum said, um, calm down, be quiet, you're embarrassing me. And I'd never thought about that until the, until the therapy session. And then it then provoked another thing. I scored a hat trick. Don't worry about it. Um, and I was it was the first hat trick I ever scored. Numerous. Um, no, it wasn't because I used to play centre-back. Um, but a couple of times I've played up front. A bit like Dion Dublin, but better. I see that, yeah. um, I see that in you. Big Dion. Um, yeah, no. I scored a hat-trick, and obviously I celebrated, um, and my dad told me it was embarrassing that I celebrated. And bearing in mind that both of these events were, I was probably about 10, 11-ish. And, and I think that those things, and coupled with the fact that I've been brought up around very working class family and I've been brought up around my parents saying they're big headed or they're a show off or like it's almost 
not frown, not frowned upon to have done well, but like it's almost like I don't know whether it's a Yorkshire thing as well that it's you don't sell it like you keep yourself to yourself. You don't you don't celebrate too much. So I don't know whether it stemmed from that from, from that in my personal um, lack of wanting to boast or or, or shout or show off. Um, I definitely think it has contributing factors. I don't know what it's like for you. For me, I think it's more um, it's more a case of I don't think it, it necessarily defines someone. Yeah. I think for me, it comes down to, again, like, I don't mind sharing this stuff at all, but like, I'm not, again, like, I think the difference between me and you is like, I think I'm from, I don't, can I say this, a little bit more of a wealthier background? I don't know if I can say that. Well, you are wealthy. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's just like a, I'm, I'm probably a bit more middle class, maybe than working class potentially. And my parents split when I was younger. And I always had like two Christmas, two birthdays and all this sort of stuff. And it uh, sounds awful, but I was never really wanting for anything. Like, it sounds really bad. Um, but the one thing my dad always instilled in me was just like, was, was hard work. Um, and my dad never wanted me to be, we, he's here at the moment. He never, we talked about it this week, actually. He, ne- he said that he always wanted to help me have a, 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 he always wanted to help me get set up in life and have no debt, but he never wanted to give me handouts. So, my dad helped me for uni, so I didn't really come out of it with, with huge amounts of debt. But then after that point, he never gave me a penny. It was like, I've set you up, like, go and do it and go and do the work now. And I, and I think it's sort of been instilled in me that, that thing. But I was always told that the car someone drives or the house that someone has got does not tell you anything about them as a person. And that was, that was, that was drilled into me quite a lot. I think my dad maybe spent time around other people with more money and stuff like that. And it's something that I'd seen as well from football. So I spent a lot of time in football. Um, from the age of, of 18 at uni uh, to, to 23 or whatever. And I've spent some time around some insanely rich people. Um, one person in particular has got more money than than anyone on the planet. And I, and I genuinely mean that. Like, it sounds ridiculous saying that now, but he's like a um, royalty in, in the Middle East or whatever, right? And the one thing that I just picked up from all these people that I'd spent all this time around with all this money is that it didn't make a single one of them happy. It just didn't, and I, and I, because they have the same problems, the same bones of contention that we have, and whatever you, whatever they had, it was not good enough. It was never enough. There was always something that was annoying them or, or bothering them. So I think I just, I picked up probably not as early on as you, but certainly in my my early adult life, that it just didn't make a difference. Like again, I trained some wealthy people in London, who by the age of fifty sold their companies, but were in a loveless marriage, and their kids hated them. And when they're fifty and they had all the cars and Ferraris and shit, but it's like. You know, so I think for me it was all like, always a case of like, uh, it's not something for me to to brag about. I think I'd rather brag about who I am as a person, my values and, and things like that, and kind of like what we've built as a business for me is far more important than the money it makes. It's the fact that we help people with their business now, but before it was about helping change their life, feel more confident in an area that I didn't feel confident in. So I felt with myself with, with muscle gain and fat loss. I mean, you, you laugh now because I haven't gained any muscle, but <laughs> I was even skinny in this. But I came from that place of feeling inadequate and not good enough from a, from a physique point of view and, and that kind of thing. And I think for me, I'm more proud of the fact that we've helped that many people achieve those things. For me, the message from a client that says, I'll never be able to thank you enough for what you've done and how you've changed my view of how I view myself and view food is more important than the two and a half grand they paid me. To me, it just is. To some people it's not. Some people it's more important they get paid what they get paid and all that sort of stuff. And I've, I think I'm very uh, tight with money. It's probably the wrong word. But I just don't, I just don't spend yeah, it's not much. the wrong word. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm tight. <laughs> I just don't spend a lot of my money. I just don't spend a lot of it. Um... I think I still feel that element, a little bit of what you were saying there, like I don't, not that I don't deserve it, but it doesn't mean much to me in terms of like, I could go out and lease a really, really nice car, but I would just see it as a waste of money because the car I've got has got four wheels and drives from here to there and does all the same things. And um, we've had this discussion before about whether we should buy a nice watch because celebrate what we've done. And it's like, that to me means a lot, but then it's that I would still feel bad because it's like, well, like... Does, what does that say about me as a person? Does it mean that I do this? Does it mean I value that over, over other things? And I think it's, it's, just, it's just a topic I just don't really think makes any difference. To, to, this is before we started this. Yeah. But I feel like with this, there's an element of credibility that, that comes that, with it. That's, that, that, that's the thing. It is the, like I was saying about the broke account and stuff. And I think sometimes it is important to, to share, I guess. Because, but, but, but I think... Because, I just, because people need to understand. Yeah. 
well, why should I, why should I listen why to you? Listen because to there's, for example, the the people that we were talking about earlier when we were walking walking in, and I said, well, but they've never actually built a business, so yeah, there's no credibility behind it. Yeah, we're sometimes just not very good at at showing the business that we've built, um, yeah. because I think. But I th- I th- in my head, it feels like we're being we're bragging and we're being arrogant, and that's yeah. that 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 is something that I was always deterred from being. But that's always as well. That's also because I think as well the way I look at that is I see people doing that who are leasing their cars and are living, you know, living li- live it and spend all their money and not really, you know. Again, it's that whole thing if you don't know what's going on behind the curtain. And I think it, we know that you can lease a Ferrari from a thousand pound a month. Is it about that thousand pound a month? I think. Yeah, you'll be able to get one for about thirteen, fourteen hundred. Okay, so you can a get a month. Ferrari for like thirteen, fourteen hundred a month, which we could both have two of, if we wanted to. If we wanted to, just you could. It just well, you could buy fucking two of them outright. Like, let's just be honest. Yeah, but it doesn't do anything. Like it's, it to me anyway. It's like, and I think people need to be aware of like the fact that you can make things look of a certain way very, very easy. Like. Again, I don't want... This is going to sound arrogant, and I don't want it to sound arrogant in any way, shape, or form, because it's, it's not, and it's coming from a place of a genuine, like, just explaining things. But, like, with £10,000 a month, you can make it look as if you're earning far, far more than that. Mm-hmm. And it, it's it's a, it's a good amount of money. It, it's not retiring money, do you know what I mean, from that point of view? But on ten grand a month, you, you can make it look like mm-hmm. you earn, like, a lot more than that. Mm-hmm. And... I, I just don't want to I just don't want to be that person like I'm the kind of person that's always like why am I doing this who am I doing this for what's the benefit of it what's the purpose all this sort of thing and I think that people watching need to be very aware that it's very easy to make it look a certain way and I personally don't believe that earning 10k a month makes you a great business owner I'm just gonna throw it out there and I don't think that means that you can be a mentor I don't think that means that you can you can be this or you can do that and we know people who are, who are doing okay and they're now business mentors and I'm like they've not built a business that I can see or that I know of. Again, maybe they have behind closed doors. Maybe they have. But this is the whole argument and why we're doing this video is because I think that could also be leveled at us. And you could say, well, yeah. what have you built? What do you do? Why should we listen to you? Because all you do is coaching or, or whatever. Like, what are the revenue streams? How does it work? And how do things come in? And we just don't like saying, oh, I earn this much. We earn this much. And I don't think, I said I don't think we ever will. I think we probably would at some point and, and talk about it. We've, we're mentioning it now to a certain degree about what, what we can afford excuse me and do but i think it's also important to know that you need to have the reason behind why you're doing it so i personally wouldn't celebrate a a milestone in my business by posting what i'd bought all over social media it's just not the way i am it's not the way i'm built i don't actually care if people do it or not um again i think you're also going to attract a certain type of person exactly people you want to attract but i think for us we need to make sure that you know that we're not just blagging this (laughs) Like, do you know what I mean? Because we don't show that side of it. Yes, we moved to Dubai, which I think has an element of like, we must have an idea of, of, of what things are like. But I don't think, I don't think people are maybe aware and, and maybe it would help people. Potentially, yeah. Potentially. Like, there's another element of me where I'm not motivated by things. Um, I'm not motivated by the carrot, basically. That that doesn't... The same. Yeah. Stick. Stick. Don't so, give me that fucking stick again. Yeah. So like... <laughs> I'm not motivated, and maybe there was a point in my life where I, I probably was, um, and then you realise when you hit. Let's just say, let's just use ten k, right? I, I never set out to be a coach to earn ten k a month. That that was never like thought process. I thought I could do really well out of coaching because when I was coming to coaching, I thought, fucking hell, like I've, I feel like I've got something about me here. Like I feel like I, I'm a bit different. I stand out. Like there was no one really swearing at the time. I was being a little bit contentious a bit abrasive like me uh, obviously um so I, I thought i could i could do quite quite well here but it was never like i need to, to earn 10k and there was no one else saying 10k this 10k that it, it, it just weren't, weren't a thing and i think it took us to, to to earn 10k or 15k to actually realize that okay well then there's just another milestone then there's just something else and um you realise that that void isn't filled by something that you're aiming for because the goalposts just move. And I heard, I can't remember who it was, but I was listening to something the other day and it was like, it said something like, the richer that they got, the poorer they felt. 
because they're just moving up fields and there's always somebody around you that's got more. Mm. And if you're searching for happiness or verification from what you're acquiring, um, you're never going to be happy. What you should what what usually is going to find happiness is is already within you it's already internal rather than looking for something external so like i've never really been motivated like i say maybe it would have been called to earn a certain amount and, and great and that to some degree that there's a figure in my mind that where we we should be doing if, if things continue to go so well um which would be cool but it, it wouldn't change life and it wouldn't make me any happier um and actually my therapist asked me when i was happiest and i probably and i said earning around 8k doing two days work and filming with you all the time dicking around going to london all that That that's probably when i was happiest um because it, 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 there's a start, isn't there? It's something like over well, 70K or something like that. You act, you don't feel any happier or some, some something yeah. like... Once you're fed, watered and stuff like that, you don't you don't actually feel any happier. Mm-hmm. It, it's just stuff. So, like, my motivation doesn't doesn't come from um, reaching for, for a nice car or something like that. My motivation stems from don't fail, don't fuck up. Everything's going to get taken away from you. Um what are people going to say if 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 you drop business like so this this inbuilt thing within me of not never feeling good enough is actually the thing that drives me forwards and it's something that i am learning to to try to accept uh, and having to accept it so like naturally if i get a couple of clients drop off i'll panic and i'll get really anxious because that that fear system that threat system kicks in and i start to to panic around it but it's actually been useful for me because it's that that stops me from taking a backward step so rather than me fixating on a lamborghini or ferrari or whatever i'm just running away from from failure which by definition is moving as closer to quote unquote success whatever you want to determine that as yeah i think i just think it's it's just something you never get taught or taught or, or told how to deal with or how to act or, or anything like that. And I'm very much the person like, like you just said there, almost a bit like if I was to buy that thing and then it was to take a turn for the worse, I'd feel like shit. I'd be like, I have to really be able to afford it to get it. Like, like you know me, you know the way, the way I am, the way we do things. It's like, I have to really rationalize in my head a purchase that I make and really think, right, what sort of a percentage of my income is this? What's it going to mean in the future? Blah, blah, blah. To the point where I actually probably miss out on certain things that I probably shouldn't, um, which is something that I'm working on and, and working on getting better at. Because again, the, the, the concept there is that you can always, you can always earn more money, but you can't always get that time back. And it's like, well, why don't I spend my time when I'm young enough to enjoy it rather than wait until I'm older and where I can't enjoy it. And, and again, we've talked about this before quite a lot of time. So like for me, I'm always thinking about uh, save enough money so that I can retire and live comfortably and, and not worry and put my kid through whatever needs to happen with, with her. And then I got asked the question, what are you going to do when you retire? And I was like, probably play golf every day. I was like, well, you only play golf three times a week now. So it's like, it's not that bad then, is it? Do you know what I mean? It's like what you what you save all this money for because you're already kind of enjoying what you're doing now. I think there's an element of that as well, which is really important. But I think the key thing that I would say from, from what you said there about, about when you were happiest, again, like for me, it was... It was. It's never when you've got the most money, which is funny, isn't it? When you look back, it's it's never when you you do that. And you and look, you, you buy nice experiences now, and you can do nice things, and you can experience great things. But there's always that thing in your head where it's like, yeah, but there's work to be done, or there's work that needs to be done. That from that point of view, whereas I think that when I was happy, it was probably as daft as it sounds when I was doing <clears throat> work for free, <clears throat> like at Reading, or like and I think about the football when I was when I was you know doing those sorts of things again it wasn't there was no responsibility because it was a free job it was just you know washing up bottles and doing stuff but you're around the footballers you're around training you felt like you were part of it and it's funny how when you look back it's when you had least responsibility and least things so t- i said to my mates on. back home i was like you know earning a good amount of money is i'm you know really grateful and stuff like that but it um it just adds pressure you've actually got something to yeah. lose so i was i was really i was really bad with money um in my um probably early 20s for, for for various reasons i think um but one of the biggest reasons was i had nothing to lose yeah. I, I didn't have anything to lose like i wasn't from you know a privileged background or anything like that so 
I would want to just go out on a night out, and if I needed to take a payday loan, I'd take a payday loan back back in the day. And it's weird that the more I've acquired, the the better I am with money because now I've got something to lose. Um, so they say that the pressure's a privilege. Yeah, it's the whole thing of like it's. You could probably use that analogy with fat loss as well. You know, to know like. Um, when you're when you're when you're overweight, you've got nothing to lose, so you would just keep eating, mm-hmm. and it doesn't really matter because yeah. you're you're already overweight. And then the issues come when you've gotten in shape, and then being neurotical, I guess, with with not getting out of shape and stuff like that. I guess it's a, it's a similar parallel, but like. Yeah, I thought I thought that this was important, and we've probably not actually covered the topic of why why you should trust us. But I thought it was important because in this space, it's all about how much a mentor has. Whereas I I wouldn't determine someone's value to your business think, or you as a coach. It is important we talk about it though, because I think when I look at all the other mentors in in doing what they're doing, they are motivated clearly by a lot of them by carrots. They 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 they're working towards this big thing, and they move into a house and they take a picture outside the house and show it off, and it's like. Is that necessary? Is that helping anyone? Like, yeah, celebrate it all you want, but like, is that necessary? Again, up to some people. Same with cars and same with things that they like. And, and I think that it's important that people know that there are people out there who aren't always motivated by those things. Like, because mm-hmm. we're not. And that's why we don't put as much out there about those kind of things. You know, we may do in the future, we may not. Who, who knows? Um, but I always ask myself the question when I see those things going, who's that serving? Because you can let's, celebrate let's ask, that. Let's ask the three people that watch this. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, you can like, you can celebrate like, buying your house, but you can celebrate with your family and you can enjoy the moment. You don't need to take a photo of it and post it on Instagram. It doesn't need to be done. Like, <laughs> why are you doing that? And and that's the thing I I, I feel with it. And for me, I, I'm just very I'm just a bit more private, I guess, with that kind of stuff. And I would celebrate with my friends and family and, and all these sorts of things. But it does I, I personally again, this is just me personally. Everyone else is entitled to their own opinion. I think when someone says, "Oh, I just wanted to celebrate this." For me, it's like, yeah, but you don't need to tell the whole world. Like, celebrate it within yourself. And it's up to you. That's just, again, the way I am. And, you know, I think Mike's probably a little bit more um, out there with celebrating those sorts of things than even I am to a, to a degree. I'm, I'm very, I still have this thing about, like, what it means about me and, and what it says about me or whatever. But I, I wouldn't necessarily feel comfortable doing that. Like, for, like I've got a nice watch. Well, sorry. What is the time? It doesn't tell the time, right, does it? Yeah, I mean, it's half ten, isn't it? Oh, it's half, it's half it, ten on a Sunday night. Yeah, it is. Um, but I, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't plaster it anywhere. Like, uh, but there's just this part of me, and again, like answering the comments, the the three people that are, are watching this, do you th- like? Would it be useful? Would it be interesting to 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 see? Because obviously, me and you preach that you need to show your life, because that's the thing that is going to pull you closer or whatever in our case i think showing our life might make us slightly more credible it should be the the reason being obviously i think our clients do a lot of the talking for us which is always the way around that i would want it to be done like we obviously get quite a lot of good testimonials we get good client results people you know rave about us no raving fans um and that's the way round that I would like it to be done. But at a certain stage, I think sometimes people, whether we like it or not, people look like they are more successful by what they show. It's the same as someone looks like a better coach because they're in shape. Mm-hmm. It's almost like that, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And at the minute, we're scared to take our tops off. Is what that's like. Quite literally. Quite, yeah, <laughs> genuinely. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 But, but that's what it's like. It's yeah. like we're scared of taking our tops off, mm-hmm. but yet there's somebody else that's flashing their abs it makes them look more credible. Yeah, we'll get the people who aren't into that, cool. Yeah. But we also need to show that, hang on, we can get people in shape. Well, Do you know what I mean? Yeah, well, that, look, let's let's go into it. So, I guess, since we started Blitz... You don't, need to, you don't need to speak specifics. No, no, we don't have to speak specifics. Let's just talk numbers of, of clients and stuff, right? But, you know, we think we have Blitz, right? So, Blitz was a group coaching program that we had over, have had over... 1,200? More. 1,400? 1,500 people. Mm -hmm. 1,500 people threw it. Um, And it was priced at 150 before. We did a few early bird prizes at 100. We've done them more recently, about 100 quid. Let's call it 100. Let's call it 100, right? Um, Do the maths on that, quick. What was it? 1,500? 150 grand. Times what, 100? Yeah. 
150 grand. So we've done blitzes, right? That have that have done done that over the space of the last two years. Is it two years we've done it? Two and a half years we've been doing blitz. Yeah. We've also had coaches uh, within our business that we take a decent percentage, nowhere near what other people are taking. Um, let's average it out at about 25 percent um, from them, and they most of them on average would earn three k a month, or something like that. I think it is. Hmm. Um, we we would be taking a percentage of that. Um, and then we've got all our playbooks and stuff like that that we've sold, all our different courses we've sold, things like that. We've probably sold about, I would say... We did three and take... 180 we, of those. 180 times. So about 50 grand. Yeah, 180 of those. Um, and and then we've now got our members group. Again, this is more more recently. Obviously, members group is, you know, 50, 50 quid a month it was. Originally, it's near, near, near 100 now, but there's 100 and... 78 paying people in that um, within the business. Uh, and that's just the business stuff. That doesn't even include our own clients. That's literally just the business uh, that, that creates all the other stuff around it. And then our client numbers have always been since since I moved out here, I've not, I've always been around 80. 80 clients. Um, you've been on more than that for a long, long time. I've been over a hundred since I lived in England. I remember going to speak to Suck, and he was like, you need to, "I was." I remember I was on a hundred and eight uh, when I spoke to, when we spoke to Suck, and he was like, "Get your numbers down." So I've been uh, been over a hundred, and the average of, oh, average price has obviously gone up as well because yeah. we're now working with with coaches. Yeah, and the coaches will know what they're charging, so use that as a, as a base number, right? And and that's been over seven years. Was it been five years we've been doing it? Four uh, five years. It's coming up to five years, isn't it? This July. It is. It's yeah, it's, July. yeah. It's five years in July. Yeah. Um, <coughs> and and but in the first two years of those, the first two years of those, we weren't really doing it. So basically, every year we've increased revenue. Uh, every year, I, I'd almost go as far to say as near enough every month. Outside of having spikes when Blitz launches, so when Blitz launches, obviously we get an influx of say 100 people onto Blitz, and they they run they run every 12 weeks basically. But I would more than that say revenue has probably increased near enough month on month, but definitely year year on year. Total clients in the business, we've employed we've done we've done a lot of stuff wrong as well. Like again, we've we've made a YouTube video on that. Put card up there. There'll be no card. Um, Never gonna be. There. there won't be. Um, we've made stuff. You know, we've done stuff wrong. Um, but we've we've employed numerous people. We've you know um, invested back into other things, mentoring, Facebook ads, so on and so forth. Um, but at, at the moment, there's nearly six hundred paying clients in the business in total. Um. As a as a whole, um, and our profit margins are somewhere in the region of eighty five to ninety percent, which of a business that's got six hundred clients is, is pretty good. Like without wanting to, you know, go over the top of things, it's not too bad. Um, Will will those profit margins decrease at a certain stage? Yeah, obviously the bigger the bigger a company goes, probably the profit margins do have to change at certain stages as you outsource as you outsource work. And again, just as another aside, if your profit margins are less than ours and you've got fifteen clients, twenty clients, mm. have a little look at how, you know what you're outsourcing and what you're delegating, and can I get can I get better at those things so I've got more cash in my pocket. Um, so why you should learn from us or why I think that we're credible is that we are we have been around together five years, you know, me personally eight years, Dan longer. We've built something that has had literally thousands of results, like literally thousands of results to good quality, to good standard, running by annual photo shoots, to a high standard, um, invested a lot back in into learning and knowledge. We've employed coaches. We've had other employees. We've tried other avenues of marketing, Facebook ads, influencers. And at the end of the day, we're still only coaches just 
like yourselves. Um, we're just you, but in a few years' time, we're not professing to be anyone that's above you or different or showing off all of the money that we're making from people, which when you see a mentor show their new watch or show their new car, think about who's paid for that and think about maybe what ethics were behind them collecting collecting that money from them. Is it someone else's credit card that's paid for that? That doesn't sit particularly very well with me. If it's someone else's credit card that's paid for that watch. They're still in debt for. That they're still in debt for. This is why we don't like to, to be as brazen. So the reasons why that you would want to work with us, hopefully, is that we are what we say we are. We, we've everything that we tell you is everything that we've done we're not lying we're not fudging numbers which people do we're not cha- saying what we did something different i've seen mentors say i didn't i didn't i never charged recurring you did i know you did for a fact i never had a group coaching you did i know you did for a fact my fitness business did a million it didn't i know it didn't for a fact there's people making up numbers so why trust us is we literally just are as we are and we do as we do and we have done as we have done. We've got results. We've got a good client base. We've got good ethics, good values, good morals. And we can help bring you on as a coach, as a business owner, as a copywriter, as a marketer, as a content creator, as an individual. That's why I think we're credible to work with. And I think also because we've got where we've got and the goal has never been to make 10k 20k month whatever it was it's never was the goal throughout we've always done it is the goal has always been we want to get x amount of people in the members group because we want to help x amount of people we want to do x amount of stuff look the money's always a nice byproduct i'm not going to sit here and say look that's not but it the the problem i feel like in the industry at the moment is just there's, there's just this the first thing is make money that's yeah. number one priority is make money and it's like you can you can do that and it can be the second priority. Trust us because we are we're kind of proof that, that you can do that and you, you have done that. Um, like I said, we're not going into specifics on numbers because I don't think it's, I, do, I still don't think it's relevant or necessary, but it's important to know certain lifestyle aspects like you've said there and maybe we'll be get better at sharing more of those and stuff like that. And maybe those guys in the members group, one-to-one clients, we'll share more of that. Maybe we'll talk about the, our, our event because there'll be loads of them there. Maybe we'll go into more detail there about what is possible. But I think the key thing that, I want to drill home to all of you watching is when we started eight years ago, it just wasn't even a thing. It just wasn't a thing. It's only recently it's become more of a thing. And the reason it's become more of a thing is because it's marketing. Because it know they, people are saying this stuff to hook you in and to get you in. That is all it is. Like at the end of the day, te- there's nothing magic about hitting a 10K month. It's just not nothing magic about it. If anything, like we've discussed previously, pay more fucking tax. Like, like, you can do very, very well in this by doing what is right by you. Trust us. You can, whatever sits right with you, whatever feels right for you, you can make a business out of it. It might take a little bit longer, but you will get there and you can do it. That's the thing I think that's most important. That's why I think you should listen to us because we're living proof that Mm -hmm. you can do it and it's on solid foundations and you will grow, you will learn, you will make mistakes rather than a hack, a tactic, a secret or something that you think is going to get you there quicker I don't know if that's necessarily sustainable. There is no short. There's no shortcuts. No. Um, hard work pays off. Apparently, mate. And uh, was it what plane it was on you on? Wasn't it? Not a train. Just yeah. Reiterate. Did I tell you about the time that I flew uh, first class? Yeah. I so, said got off the wrong dessert, didn't you? On the yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Anyway. Maybe that was nice. He Maybe said, that was good for you to tickets, see. Tickets, please. Can I, can can I, I see, see tickets? What was, the, what was the exact line? Well, he, well, said, he said, I was sat there. He was, yeah. Sorry, what's the line? I just, he, and there's nothing came, coming out. There's nothing coming came, out. Yeah. That's extras. Ah, you know, yeah. anyway, extras. But yeah, hope you enjoyed that anyway. That was, um, You've yeah. never been Why should listen to us? You've never been a casualty? Oh, well, yeah, I have, yeah. yeah. What, not on the ceiling? Well, no. 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 You haven't been on the bill. <laughs> I don't want to be on the bill. <laughs> have a good one. See you in a minute. Wait. All right, last one. Copyright. Copy. That's a good one. Yeah, we are. Yeah, cut and then yeah, roll. Thank you.